Hello, my name is Melissa. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, if you've been here before, then welcome back. Uh, this is a video um, I put together. Of, it's a process time lapse video of this painting of a little red schoolhouse that is beside um, the house that was my grandma and grandpa's house that we used to go to all the time as kids. Um, I used gouache and color pencil, Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils, and Neocolor to water soluble wax pastels. <laughs> it's all a mouthful. Um, I'll explain um, the materials and everything as we get into it, but I just wanted to come on and say hi and show you what I'm going to end up painting today. And I'm going to um, kind of talk along the process as we go, as well as answering a couple of Q&A questions that I got um, from Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I am Melissa Lynn 416. I'll put it right here. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I would love to see you over there. And thank you for being here. And I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome to the voiceover. The sketchbook I'm using is a Talons Art Creation A5 sketchbook. Um, it looks like they've been making these sketchbooks since 1899, which is a very long time. My gouache paints that I'm using is just a limited palette, and you can see them all over on my plate there in the upper right corner. Um, I just let it dry on there, and I just keep remixing. They're really good for, like, it's a landscape palette. <laughs> I've been painting a lot of landscapes lately. Um, but anyway, the colors that I have are Permanent White, Alizarin Crimson, Spectrum Yellow, Burnt Sienna, and Thalo Blue. Um, they are fantastic and the amount of colors that you can get just from these four or well, five colors if you include the white um it like is it kind of blows my mind i'm i'm really new to limited color palettes um and i am new to professional quality winsor newton designer gouache and it's really lovely i started out my gouache journey using the Hemi Hemi gouache you know the ones that are um, everywhere in <laughs> the like the yellow um, plastic container with the whatever 18 different colors of gouache in there. Anyway, uh, what else am I using here? I am using Premier. You'll see them come in the Prismacolor Premier color pencils, and I just have a limited color palette that I use mostly, mostly, um, <laughs> most of the time. And, but I do end up pulling in my whole, um, I think I have a 72 color set. So, um, I do use more than just the colors that you see there in the little orange case. And then I'm also using Neo color twos from Karen dash. Um, and those are the water soluble wax pastels. I don't add water to them. Um, I don't typically add water to them, although you can, and the consistency turns out to be quite gouache like um i just use them basically as crayons <laughs> it's a fancy it's a fancy crayon let's be honest um but they are lovely they're very lovely um very different from oil pastels which i also like um so i would say it's definitely more of a crayon than a, than a pastel but uh very lovely so how i'm starting this out is just very loose and watery gouache to sketch out the main subjects, the house and the trees and everything. And then the, the red that I'm using here is still quite, um, still quite watery. So I'm just going to go through here and lay down a layer of gouache before um, I come in with pencils and neo colors. So it's just a lot of me uh, kind of blocking in color right now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll come back in and, and mention um, if I see myself doing something interesting, <laughs> uh, it, something of note, uh, maybe I will come back. So as I mentioned in my really embarrassing, awkward intro, I did get a few questions for a bit of a um, get to know me. Um, yeah, for a bit of a get to, know, get to know me. And the first question I got is, what is your earliest memories of making art? Now I haven't thought about I haven't thought about any of these uh, answers to any of these, but I do remember I was in grade two, and I used to write a lot of stories. And I don't I mean this is technically considered art, 
I have another memory that's just coming into my head that may be more relevant, but let me, let me talk about um, my grade two story. So I was writing a lot of stories and I guess somebody saw some potential in me and they put me into a special class where we got to write stories on the computer, which um, would have been mid eighties which I'm, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm in solidly in my forties. <laughs> so mid eighties. And I got to, I got to like me and I think it was like five or six other kids. We would go into the special room at a certain, you know, for a certain period of time. Um, I think it was over a couple of weeks or something like that and got to write stories out on the computer. And that was really fun. I don't know if that's art. I mean, writing is art, but not, not in the same sense. Um, the next kind of early memory is, um, I used to draw these strawberry people, like they were like just big strawberry heads. And I'll see next time if I'm at my parents' house, if I can find a picture (laughs) of one. Um, and yeah, they like strawberry shaped heads with like, you know, the top of a strawberry hair. Um, <laughs> and they were really cute. I think that was around grade six that I was obsessed with drawing those. Um, yeah, that's, that's the earliest. Um, I'm pretty sure I was always drawing, writing, drawing stories and stuff like that. And maybe looking through some old, um, like journals and stuff that would still be at my mom's house, um, might help jog some memories of that. <laughs> uh, So back to what I'm doing here on screen, you can see I'm coming in with some more vibrant, darker colors laying in the kind of blobby shapes in the tree. This picture was taken during early fall. Um, So the leaves were starting to change. There's a lot of orange and red and everything, um, which is a fun and challenging thing to paint. (laughs) Uh, Just smushing colors on. Uh, The next question is if your favorite color had a specific texture what would it be that's such an interesting uh such an interesting way to think about color (laughs) um I would have to say it would be velvet yeah (laughs) if you want a little bit more my favorite color is like a dark green um yeah like a dark um, kind of foresty, kind of olive green, like a mix of that. And so I always think of that as velvet, like that is just lush and, um, feels, feels a nice. Um, okay. Next is what is your favorite art medium? Hmm. I think... <laughs> it's oil pastel actually yeah I was, I was trying to think between watercolor and gouache but really I have the most fun when I use oil pastels just really loose and scribbly and abstract um yes definitely oil pastel I love getting my fingers dirty with them like when I'm done an oil pastel painting I've got oil pastels up to my elbows <laughs> and it just makes me happy uh, what is my favorite subject or thing to paint slash draw? I would say right now it's landscapes. Um, I'm still riding high from my summer of plein air painting. And we're November, what are we now? November 24th in Toronto. <laughs> um, and so it's been getting really chilly. And I haven't been outside since, I think it was since early October to um, sit and paint. But I do want to get out at some point, like bundle up and um, do at least a couple paintings throughout the winter and uh, see how that goes. And then as early as possible next year, as soon as everything is a little bit more comfy, um, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do a lot more uh, plein air paintings, more than I did this year, which was a lot more than I was expecting. Um I'm just going to pause from the questions here and I see myself using color pencils. <laughs> uh, so here you can, you can see I'm keeping it pretty loose and scribbly. Um, obviously right now putting in the, um, 
frames around the windows and stuff like that is a little less scribbly, but I'm still not being super precious about it. Like I want everything to feel loose. Um, but you'll see like when I get into the trees and the grass and stuff, it's just, it's like wild scribbles. <laughs> I think that's the only, you know, it's the only way that I know how to describe how I use color pencils. Like a lot of um, artists are, they use them like really precise with shading and like, it's just beautiful, but um, they don't work for me like that. <laughs> they don't work for me like that at all. And you can see I've used this green color a lot because I'm down to the nub and almost, almost uh, time to replace it. I have one on reserve. I have already bought, um, bought a replacement for it, but you can see here just this video now is, um, I meant to mention it earlier, is set up 200%. So it's twice as fast as real time. But I think you can still tell how kind of fast I, I move around. And I did cut out, I should mention, um, anytime I went and grabbed new paint from the palette. So anytime really my brush was inactive, um, grabbing paint. And same with the pencils I didn't keep in because otherwise this video would have been an hour long. Um, anytime I like put down, picked up a pencil, I cut that out. So I, I saved you a lot of watching me decide what color <laughs> to use. Um, yeah, but you can see the, this here illustrates uh, the scribble, the scribbliness and just how uh, loose and free and imprecise um, I'm being. All right. Uh, I already answered, what is your favorite color? We said a dark green. <laughs> Although I do also love a chartreuse green and a dark green plus chartreuse green plus a little bit of pink. It's a good combo. It's a very good combo. Um, next question is sketchbook or canvas or loose paper. I'm going to say sketchbook. I love flipping through sketchbooks. I love going back in time and looking back at the progress that happens through a sketchbook. Um, I think it tells a really good story, even if the subject matter is all different and everything. Although for the most part, I mean, excluding the last sketchbook, tour that I posted here. Um, my sketchbooks kind of have purpose or for a specific medium or something. Um, although this one I'm working in here is kind of, it's, well, I mean, I either use gouache or color pencil or neo colors or a combination, but I've also started using a little bit of watercolor in here, which this paper is not watercolor paper at all. Um, but it's really fun to use it. <laughs> and I've done a couple oil pastels in here. Uh, so a sketchbook to answer the question. <laughs> um, do you collect anything? I collect Starbucks mugs. I used to work at Starbucks just part-time. It was one of my favorite, um, employment situations of life <laughs> so far. Just no pressure. You know, you get to chat with people and, um, I don't need to get into that, but I was going to say working at Starbucks helped me start my freelance graphic design uh, journey of my career, which helped me start my little digital uh, creative agency that uh, me and my partner run now. So thankful for Starbucks for many, many things. Uh, but yes, anytime we go um, on vacation, travel anywhere, we always pick up a Starbucks mug if they have them available. Uh, so we've got a nice little collection of that. And then like little tchotchkes and stuff like that. Um, and I also collect art prints from Sophie McPike. <laughs> Check her out if, uh, if you don't know who she is. Um, favorite comfort movie? I think it, it, there's two. Um, the first one is the sound of music and, <laughs> um, yeah, that's like an annual watching. It's not Christmas until I watch the sound of music, which doesn't really make any sense to me because it is not a Christmas movie, but, um, yeah, that's just, uh, that's just what happens. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, pause for, I hope I'm recording this. <laughs> Um, I am now using Neo colors in here and again, uh, just loose and scribbly, but it just adds extra depth and dimension that the pencil doesn't, um, doesn't bring like it just brings, yeah, extra depth, I think. Um, yeah, they just, they, they work really, really well, um, in combination with everything. 
Um, what are you listening to right now? I just finished listening to Daisy Jones. Is it Daisy Jones and the Six? Or I forget what it is by Taylor Jenkins Reid, the audiobook. I just before I started recording this, um, I finished reading, reading, air quote, reading, <laughs> listening to that audiobook. Um, it felt very like Fleetwood Mac to me. I don't know if that's the inspiration, but it felt very, very Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks um, drama to me. So it was good. It was entertaining the way that it was recorded, just different voice actors reading all of the different parts and stuff. It was pretty interesting. Uh, what's your karaoke song of choice? This is a, this is a fun one. <laughs> um, Hold On by Wilson Phillips. By far, me and my sister are ever in a karaoke bar. I'm sorry, Annette. We are singing that song at the top of our lungs. Um, also, any road trips together that happens. Followed by Middle Class Gangsters by Matthew Goodband. <laughs> um, I'll belt that out just anytime anytime good old 90s alternative canadian rock music uh, last question is what are you looking forward to uh, i am looking forward to going to mexico in december we're going for um, a week to tulum so very excited about that and that brings me to the end of my questions and also to the end of this video you can see me doing the most satisfying of tape reveal um tape peels here <laughs> Uh, sometimes this masking tape um, rips the paper like this is a really cheap sketchbook but I love it I love it it's it's cheap but I love it and sometimes the masking tape and the paper does not um, they do not get along but uh, this, uh, this seemed to work well <laughs> um, and then yeah you can see the finished painting here it's, it's loose it's scribbly um, it's expressive, it's colorful, it captures um, the vibes and the feel of the schoolhouse and everything. And I'm just writing that it is um, the East Heidelberg School, which is in just outside of St. Jacobs in Ontario. Um, <laughs> you'll see with the date I start at the end so that it lines up nicely with the edge of the paper. I'm not always that precise, but you know, sometimes just works out that way. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope my rambling wasn't too much. That seemed like a really fast 20 minutes of talking. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, but thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Day Teddy Price shows up at my door. He was put in charge of me, I guess. He was supposed to convince me to show up to the studio, kind of paternal. I open the door to see him on my doorstep, and he doesn't even say hello. He says, Let's cut the crap, Daisy. You need to record this album, or Runner's taking you to court. I said, I don't care about any of that. hello um let's try that again <laughs> oh boy i feel rusty i feel rusty at recording videos um hi uh my name is melissa i don't know that i've really ever properly introduced myself on youtube um no i said that like youtube <laughs> um i uh i am what am i doing i'm starting over <laughs>